For three decades, SCT has been using the ANSI strain cell and the overcoring technique to get high confidence measurements to determine the 3D in situ stress in ROM. SCT has now developed the technology to make overcore measurements in deep exploration boreholes remote from underground mines. Our approach to determine the full three-dimensional in situ stress field is unique and allows us to provide high confidence measurements for our clients well before the commencement of any underground excavation. This approach is being applied all over the world. A high precision data logger fixed to the back of the ANSI cell records temperatures, fluid pressure and rock strain on 18 electrical resistance strain gauges every few seconds. Stress or pressures in the Earth's crust is generated by the weight of overlying rock and the movement of tectonic plates. While we can't measure stress directly, we can determine the stress in three dimensions by measuring displacements or strains in an elastic material such as rock. Through a process of removing the in situ stress to zero called overcoring, and by independently measuring the material properties of the rock, the full three-dimensional in situ stress field can be determined. Stresses concentrate around underground openings, and if the magnitude of the in situ stress exceeds the rock strength, the rock becomes overloaded and will fail, with direct implications for opening stability. An understanding of the stress can be used by design engineers to reduce the potential for rock failures in underground openings or promote rock failure in caving style mining operations where controlled failure of the rock mass is required to break up all material. To determine the 3D stress, we first need to extend the borehole to the desired stress measurement horizon. Install the ANSI strain cell in this hole and then drill over the top of the instrument to remove the in situ stress. Using a special drive sub that is installed behind the core barrel, a downhole drilling system is deployed on the drilling rig wireline to prepare a small diameter pilot hole beyond the end of the HQ diameter borehole. Pilot hole preparation is a two-stage process where the bottom of the HQ hole is first shaped using a bullnose diamond bit to remove the core stub and leave a conical indentation in the bottom of the hole. A 48mm pilot hole is then extended 1m beyond the HQ hole and concentric to it. The bore hole is flushed and the HQ drill bit is seated on the bottom to prevent drill cuttings re-entering the pilot hole. At this point, the 48mm core barrel is removed. If the recovered core is suitable for an installation, we begin preparations for the installation of the ANSI cell. The ANSI cell installation assembly is prepared by initiating the data logger and orientation device. The instrument is coated with an epoxy cement that is used to bond the instrument and strain gauges directly to the pilot hole wall. The two-part modular installation assembly is then lowered into the drill pipe using the drilling rig wireline and dry release. Once the installation assembly strikes water, it is released to float to the bottom of the hole, seating on the landing ring at the back of the core barrel. The strain cell is then inflated from the surface using differential water pressure in the drill pipe or compressed air. During inflation, the strain gauges are pressed directly against the rock while the epoxy cement cures. Depending on temperature, this usually takes four to six hours. Once the epoxy glue is cured, a pressure test is initiated by changing the internal pressure of the strain cell by increasing and then decreasing the inflation pressure. Strain changes in the rock provide a measure of the in situ elastic modulus of the rock and an indication of the functionality of each of the instrument's 18 strain gauges. Next, the upper section of the modular installation assembly is removed on the wireline, leaving only the anti-strain cell and the data logger in place. The core barrel inner tube is pumped back in and once seated, the instrument is ready to be overcored. Overcoring is undertaken using normal coring techniques while the drilling rate is recorded on surface. Once the ANSI cell has been overcored, the inner tube containing the overcore and data logger are recovered on the wireline. Once on surface, the data logger and orientation device are downloaded and the strains are viewed to provide an immediate indication of the result integrity. The overcore is placed into a biaxial compression cell where external pressure is applied and then relaxed, providing a second measure of the elastic properties of the rock. 
the rock core recovered from the pilot hole is sent to a laboratory for testing of mechanical properties. A multi-stage uniaxial compression test is conducted on the core to provide a third measure of the elastic properties of the rock. Using the strain changes measured during overcoring and the elastic properties determined prior to overcoring, post overcoring, and in the laboratory, the three dimensional stress field is determined. The high number of independent strain changes measured during the overcoring process provides statistical confidence in the result as an estimate of the in situ stress field determined at the point of measurement. SCT's 3D stress measurement and analysis process characterizes the three-dimensional in-situ environment with high confidence measurements made during the exploration and design stage, long before any underground excavations are started. This capability allows underground operations to be designed for safer, more effective and more reliable operations. If you would like to discuss the opportunity to characterize the three-dimensional stress environment at your site, visit us at sct.gs.